Hi everyone, I'm Jason with Level Up Investing and in this video I'm going to talk about ExxonMobil. So I'm going to go over my position with ExxonMobil, but more importantly my plan with my position given the current news items and a look into the financials of ExxonMobil specifically. So as many of us know, ExxonMobil is a very large international company that's involved in the exploration, production and sale of crude oil. Uh, as well as um, petroleum products, natural gas, petrochemicals. And you can read all about their, um, their history and their outlook, their long-term outlook on the energy sector in their 128-page 10K. Or we could just go over some of the highlights here. If you're watching this video, chances are you, you're well aware that uh, over the past week or so here that there was a significant change in the oil price um, with, with a pandemic um, has, uh, has occurred and has caused a lot of, uh, a lot of activities to, to decrease or go down to zero. Things like travel, uh, cruise lines, people driving because of stay-at-home orders. So all over the world, the, uh, the use of, of petroleum products has decreased. So um, in response to that, the oil price, the crude oil prices have significantly decreased to the point of negative numbers. And uh, the, the futures, you're just seeing on, on charts that uh, you probably see all over the internet, uh, the, the futures numbers have decreased. There's a lot of discussion uh, from, the, uh, from the current uh, government, from the federal administration about uh, stimulus package and that's being worked out right now so there's a whole lot of uncertainty uh, with the industry right now and so that's why specifically it's, it's very dicey and the way I see it so that's why I really wanted to take it into account all of these factors and look at the the one company that I have a holding in and that's uh, that's Exxon Mobil uh, that's in this industry and look at the very specific financials of Exxon Mobil to see what I'm gonna do next I do have a position in ExxonMobil. I recently purchased some uh, during the dip and uh, now the price of ExxonMobil has been uh, increasing over the last few days uh, despite the global economy. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with the, the uh, talk of a stimulus. So let's go over the, the specific numbers when it comes to ExxonMobil itself. All right, so let's walk through some of the financials of, of ExxonMobil. So this is my uh, uh, page here for uh, Wall Street Journal and let's go right into the financials and let's start with the income statement. So the first thing uh, you can see here for the revenue over the past five years revenue has been a little bit of up and down so uh, decrease in 15% in 2016 then it had a couple of really good years in revenue and then over the past year from 2018 to 2019 you can see this decrease of 8.3 percent. So that's the first question for me is why is it not a, a gradual increase? Why is there a drop here? Uh, the next step is I'm looking at the uh, uh, when you take into account all the expenses you get down to the the net uh, the net income So uh, the net income looks to really parallel the, the top line, parallel the revenues. So uh, quite a significant drop uh, over the past year. So when I see that, the first thing I want to look at is I want to take a look at the 10K uh, and, and see what kind of explanation there was for that. So we'll look at that in just a second. Uh, also, you can see the diluted EPS here. Um, again, mirrors that and looks at the, you see a, a decrease over the past year. So moving on to the, to the balance sheet. One of the things, the first thing I want to look at is I want to see what's happening with the total assets and over the course uh, the total current assets, first of all, has had a steady increase uh, of uh, three, uh, Looks like uh, just a, uh, what is that? Um, about two billion uh, in uh, current asset increase. Total asset increase of about five percent, a little less than five percent. So um, I want to know, okay, how did that increase go about? If the revenues and net income has decreased, so I look 
I like to look at the uh, long-term debt and what I can see here is the long-term debt kind of again up and down here but then over the past year a significant almost uh, looks like a, a more than a 10 billion dollar increase in long-term debt so again I want to know what's going on there and I'm not going to get that from the financials it'll be more from the from the 10k from 2018 2019 so we'll, we'll take a look at that while I'm here I like to look at the liquidity of the company so I'm looking at the the current assets over the current liabilities and uh, that's also known as the uh, current ratio so uh, uh, 0 0.78 uh, you can see that so where did we get that you take the total current assets let's see uh, let's see here the total current assets here of 50 billion zero five two divide that by the total current liabilities 63.98 you get 0.78 so that's the current ratio so uh, at first glance I I would get concerned normally I'd say okay why is the uh, why is the uh, liquidity um, less than a, a, a one to one um, why isn't it positive and, uh, and I also look look back at the last five years I realized that that's pretty much pretty par for the course a little bit of a drop compared to the previous year but that is also something I like to look at um, that it is it is um, low but some companies it can be low if the if the finances are managed right um, if the uh, cash flow is managed right so um, so that's uh, just a yellow flag for me uh, on that so then uh, if I really want to bring it down to uh, actual cash flow we'll go to the actual cash flow statement and I like to look at the uh, net operating cash flow looking at the actual cash that the company is is generating not not cash that's coming from uh, uh, investment activities or financing taking on debt selling some more stock you know just actual operational cash flow and what I see here is this also I see a drop from 20, 2018 to 2019 of um, almost 18 percent so to me out of all of these numbers that to me is the most uh, interesting and the most uh, the most reason why I want to take a look at the 10k to explain that so let's take a look at that right now to see if we can get some type of explanation so this is the 10k for 2019 for fiscal year ending December 31st for Exxon Mobil. so let's see what we can find here I uh, I scroll down to the management discussion and analysis of financial condition and results of operations so let's see here I first of all I'm looking at the earnings and I can see the net income uh, just like we saw in the uh, financials on the Wall Street Journal we saw this decrease in the net income and the correlated a decrease in earnings uh, per common share and a little discussion here on starting to have a little discussion on on why there was a decrease so uh, I can just read this Exxon Mobil with its resource base uh, is well positioned to participate in substantial investments to develop new energy supplies so with the company's integrated business model with significant investments in upstream downstream and chemical segments reduces the corporation's risk from changes in commodity prices and they go into that in detail in this uh, report again it's 128 pages but the, the basic idea is that um, with serious fluctuations in commodity uh, prices the uh, um, the company has invested a lot in the upstream which is more the exploration and and uh, manufacturing um, of the products and then the downstream which is the uh, the transportation and actual selling of the products and then the petrochemical segments so they talk about how they've invested a lot in in those um, in order to stay competitive um, considering the uh, the risks with uh, commodity prices so we're starting to get a little bit of explanation here uh, looking at the earnings uh, specifically uh, there they broke them up into upstream earnings downstream earnings and the uh, petrochemicals 
So uh, the net income, this is the overall earnings when you take them all into account. This correlates with the numbers we just looked at on the uh, financials. The net income, uh, significant decrease in this case of uh, about $6 billion uh, over, the, over the year. And the explanations that they determined here, um, the, the upstream earnings didn't have that much of a difference, but the downstream earnings, as you can see, had a significant difference over from one year to the next. Margins decreased earnings by $3 billion, including the impact of lower North American crude differentials. So what that's saying is that uh, that there are different um, weights to the oil all throughout the world and the the heavier the weight of the oil the more um, uh, the, the tougher it is to to um, send it through pipelines and and I know this is a very uh, simple way of explaining it but the uh, the difference in the oil the heavier it is the the lower a customer is going to be willing to buy it because it's going to cost so much to to mobilize it Hope that makes sense. So what they're saying is that uh, with heavier oils that they have sold, uh, the prices were, there's a differential in the price, so the margins decreased. So that is their explanation for the uh, downstream uh, earnings, a decrease. And then when they uh, further, and, and this one is again for the chemicals, weaker margins decreased the earnings from the chemical section by $1.8 billion. So then uh, going down to the cash flow from operation, operating activities uh, uh, description and explanation, what they wrote here is that cash provided by operating activities totaled $29.7 billion in 2019, uh, which is $6.3 billion lower than 2018. The major source of funds was net income, including non-controlling interests of $14.8 billion, a decrease of $6.6 .6 billion. So from reading this report, that's what I got as the biggest reason why there was a decrease in the uh, top line, a decrease in the bottom line of the income statement. And, uh, and here is the decrease uh, explanation for the decrease in the, uh, in the cash flow. So um, if this was a... Uh, uh, significant uh, decrease that was attributed to uh, a decrease in the sales. So my overall impression of ExxonMobil is that there were a couple good years in there and then 2019 was a, a quite a challenging year due to the um, weaker margins, due to the, uh, the lower revenue and lower uh, um, top line revenue, lower net income, and the lower cash flow. And now 2020, as we know, is, is going to be even more challenging with the pandemic and with decreased demand for oil and petroleum products. So there's a lot of uncertainty there with, with all of this happening. And uh, you had the recent uh, negative um, oil price and you know those futures are decreasing. So a lot of uncertainty. The upside that uh, that we're seeing is the potential for a, a stimulus, which uh, the president is, um, is saying that, that the country is, is going to support the oil industry. So we're yet to see at this point what that's gonna be, but that's the potential upside. So the bottom line for me is that there's a lot of uncertainty with this whole industry right now. Uh, and this specific company, which I have a position on, um, was doing pretty well, had a, a tough year in 2019 comparatively and 2020 is probably going to be even tougher uh, considering everything else that's happening. So I recently bought Exxon Mobil stock during the recent dip and um, now we're seeing that the prices are, are steadily increasing for this specific stock. I think it has a lot to do with the talk regarding a, a stimulus but the financials from, from last year and the outlook from this year with the news uh, to me does not uh, paint a very good picture. So when you take all that into account, what I've decided is um, I'm going to currently hold my position right now uh, and see what happens over the next few days when it comes to a stimulus to see what happens to the price. And once I've generated a, a reasonable profit on, on this stock, um, I'm most likely going to go ahead and sell my position at that time and um, really see what the uh, results are for, for all of these things that are happening. So that's my plan for ExxonMobil at this time and I hope uh, this review here has uh, 
been of value to you and uh, if you like the content go ahead and definitely give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and we'll see you on the next one